If you've known me for a little bit, you probably have seen me make fun of Arch Linux, you know, maybe like once or twice on Twitter. I still have no idea what is happening here. And now look at me, I'm, I'm actually using Arch Linux, okay? I'm using it. And you're probably asking yourself, why? Why did you change? Why did you leave your wife and kids and reclaim your virginity? Well, the thing is, is it's not because of the anime waifus, okay? That didn't, that, that did not convince me. It's not because Ye is the greatest package manager of all time. No, it's because of pewds. That's right, PewDiePie. This man right here, the man who taught me that Ninja died of Ligma. He shamed me, shamed me into using Arch Linux. But before I tell you what has changed, what my desktop experience is like, what, why my developer experience is truly better than yours, I first wanna tell you why I make my changes. Because if I don't, I'm gonna have 100 comments like, Kitty is better, Wes Termic is better, why don't you use this, why don't you use that? I don't honestly care about your opinion, so please stop leaving that comment, okay? Thank you. By the way, this wasn't some sort of reverse psychology. I really, I don't care. Please don't tell me Kitty is better, okay? Is, is, is this what you want? That's what you want? You want this kind of Kitty experience? I don't want that, okay? Okay, so my philosophy of rice is really, really simple, okay? I ask myself, what is the telos of rice? The telos for me is developer experience, not looks. What I use and how I use it is because I want a faster and better developer experience. This means it doesn't bother me that I use Tmux and not ZellaJ. To me, it's just commands on a CLI. All I want is a terminal multiplexer that works consistently that I know how to use. They're all the same to me, okay? Session, windows, panes, I don't care. I just want sessions and windows. I don't even like panes, okay? It, they're a pain in the ass. And my telos is from a day back at Netflix when my coworker showed me his setup. He used Emacs, the Lord's operating system, and my goodness, it was so fast. It was so smooth. It made my little Better Touch Tools Mac OS X experience look like the base of a mountain comparatively to his. He was at the tippity top. I was at the base and I hated it. I wanted to be better. I wanted to be faster. I wanted to be smoother. I wanted to be covered in that sweet, sweet coconut oil, but I was not. So my telos of rice is very, very simple. It comes in four steps. One, try not to stray from defaults. Because the more things you have to configure, the more times you'll have to open up some like crappy UI or something and kind of like set up some extra layers of config and all that. It's just, I, 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 I want nothing to do with it, okay? Second, never search with your eyes if possible. Meaning, I want to press one button and go to where I want to go. If I can't do that, I want to fuzzy find to where I want to go. And if then I can't do it, I then will accept searching with my eyeballs or like typing and doing Doing something super slow to get to where I want to go. Oh no, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this was gonna happen. My, my microphone stand finally broke. Oh my gosh. The single worst developer experience of all time has to be the Mac OS X like explode feature. You know when people go like, Ugh, and then they search just for that. For what they, oh my gosh. When I see someone use that, I actually just genuinely think it's a crime against developers. It is the worst single feature of all time. Like how do you, how did you get here? How did you manage to, to start living this life? Third thing is don't switch to something because it's newer. That's not a, that's not a reason to use something. There has to be a real reason to use it. Four, create tools that make your experience better. Don't create tools to save like a keystroke. So obviously the biggest change I've made is this. There's no more screen tearing. I know eight years of quality content <sighs> and it's gone. I no longer have screen tearing. It's kind of a sad day. Pour one out for screen tearing. I now use Hyperland as my window manager. Look at these rounded quarters. Look at the gap. Look at this nice blue window outline. I know, I, I, I have said, that I would not want to use gaps, but guess what? I'm a new boy. I'm gonna give it a shot, okay? I think that you should always do that. Try just giving it a shot. Just see how it feels. And if you don't like the gaps, get rid of the gaps. So far, I'm, uh, I'm still on the fence. And also, by the way, also just I just want you to know this, absolutely not, no animations, okay? So you see this, you see these animations? No, they're dead, they're gone. I want a quick, instant, no transition, because if there's a transition, I just sit there and I just look at the transition. I just salivate over the transition. You know why? I have too much ADHD or something. I don't know what happens. I can't help but to just look at it, be transfixed by the slow motion. If you make a transition five seconds long, I'm like stun locked. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. 
Speaking of fast transitions, here's a word from our sponsor. Whether you are a vibe coder or an artisanally free range NeoVim user, you still need CI to build your binaries, run tests, and publish your releases. That's where Blacksmith comes in. It takes your GitHub actions and with a one line change makes them faster and cheaper. Get your CI running on high performance CPUs instead of GitHub's old servers. We're happy to have them as a sponsor for this episode because, just like us, this one is truly a no-brainer. Sign up and enjoy faster GitHub Action workflows at a much lower price. Blacksmith, twice the speed and half the cost. Check them out at blacksmith.sh. I've been working on my transitions. Anyways, back to the video. I'm also trying to drive my experience more through my window manager because before I used to do a lot through the terminal and now I'm trying to move it up, up, level it into the window manager. So if I just simply go mod S, I have a screenshot. I can grab a little screenshot. That's super duper handy. It goes right into my clipboard. If I want to refresh any of my developer tools, all I have to do, super shift D. Yeah, that's right. Give it the super shifty. And then if I want to update my way bar, restart it and add whatever new icons I have, mod W. So it actually kind of feels nice because I have everything kind of set up. And speaking of Waybar, look at this Waybar. Okay, I want to start right here. Zoom in. Zoom it in. If you look right here, what you're going to see. Yeah, that's right. That's my server. I have my little server status up here. I know if OBS is connected. I know if my admin panel is connected. If it's not up, it says down. Right? That makes sense. Next over is how many you know, workspaces I have on this monitor. Pretty dang useful. What workspace am I on? Actually, honestly, I don't even need this. I actually don't even know why I have this here to tell you the complete truth. I already know how I use my stuff. I use it one way 100% of the time. I don't have to search. There's no searching, okay? Next, I have the time in the middle, and I've always been curious about this. Why not just the day of the month and the time? Like, why do you have what month it is? Why do you have what year it is in your time? Like, don't you know this? Yes, you know this. You don't need to know it's Thursday. You know it's Thursday, okay? I don't even have a full-time real job, and I know it's Thursday. You don't have an excuse, okay? I understand that every day is a stand-up day, and every day you have to hear about Bill's dog, and you don't want to hear about it, so you try to forget every single day by drowning yourself in C-sharp code. But that's not me. I just simply remembered, okay? <laughs> and of course... There's my volume, my speakers, how many battery life units I have, if I'm plugged into the ethernet. There's my CPU humming along. There's how much memory I'm using. You're probably asking yourself, hey Prime, how are you using that many gigabytes? Well, this fun thing called the browser, okay? Apparently you can't have more than just a handful of tabs open without using just gigawatts of memory. Also look at this locked screen. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with the locked screen. I've literally never locked my screen in my lifetime. Look at it though, it's so beautiful. I can just Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But the most painful moment of me becoming an arch boy was actually an opt-in feature. See, the thing is, is that remember the first point of my telos of change, which is always use defaults? I used to be an alt boy, okay? I'd use alt as my kind of my window manager key. But by using alt, so many other programs use alt and they'd render all those shortcuts useless. So I've switched over to super, which is on the other hand, which means that every single time I want to change workspaces or all that, I have like eight years of muscle memory going, it's alt brother, <laughs> but it's not alt. Okay. I found myself struggling a little bit, but I'm happy I've made the change because now I can do cool things like this and Zen. I can just press alt one and I go to Twitch. I can press alt two. I go to discord. I can press alt three and I can go to Twitter. Okay. That's pretty nice. I like that. I'm happy about that experience. And that's right. I also use Zen if you can't tell. I think Zen is uh, honestly just the, the, the whole like tab experience and the essentials. It's by far the best way to use a browser. It's fantastic. Absolutely like it. It's just better than whatever that vertical business or that horizontal business up on top is. Okay. And lastly, organizing your workspaces is just so important. Listen to me. Okay. Workspace one. That's my browser. You can see that workspace two. Twitch chat, workspace three, that's where I do all my testing. Workspace four, that's where I do all my coding. Workspace five, this is where I do all my prompting of the AI to write my CSS because I never want to write CSS ever in my entire lifetime. And workspace six is where I make beautiful drawings. That's right, just one key press. I go to the program I want to go to. I don't have to scroll. I don't have to play that game of going like this, command tab, command tab, command tab, command tab. I don't have to like search through a list. I don't have to use my eyeballs. I know when I press super one, I go to my browser. There's no questions in my brain. I set it up the same way every single time. But honestly, it's not about the looks for me, okay? It's about what's on the inside, the powering of the developer experience. And that's why I just simply use Ghosty plus Tmux, okay? 
And yes, I don't have fast fetch. I don't need you to tell me what operating system I'm using. I don't need you to tell me my local IP. I don't need you to tell me my battery life. I have literally no idea why people use fast fetch. I actually don't get it at all. And fast fetch is only slightly confusing as compared to Yazi, why would you use a file manager? What is a terminal file manager for? What are you? I don't even get it. I don't even get it. Okay, because when I work, I work in Vim. I use NetRW. I shift things around and use all my sweet hotkeys to get things done. Why? What, if, what are you doing? If I need to delete a directory, I just use RM, remove the French. Oh, did, did I hurt your feelings just then? Making fun of Fast Fetch and Yazi? Are you gonna have to snuggle up next to your little full body anime waifu pillow and just endure these trials and tribulations? Yes, I still use Tmux. Yes, I understand it's not as new as Zellage. Zellage, or Zellage, or however you're supposed to say it, okay? Zellage. And guess what? Look at these two commands. One's Tmux, one's Zellage. They both create a detached session and they both start at a specific directory. It's the same thing. This is like 80% of my Tmux commands. After that, I just open up Windows. I just literally prefix C. That's it. I swear, if one person suggests using Zellage. Also, Tmux Sessionizer is incredible. As you can see, look at all these like directories I can fuzzy find, jump to exactly where I want to go. And that means with Tmux, I can do the whole previous session thing, or I can fuzzy find to where I want to be. It is more than I want and it's super fast. And the best part is, is that I use Vim, by the way, if in case you didn't know, I'm a big Vim boy. Okay, hey, I use Vim, by the way, it's right there. Can you see that? Look at that, yeah, 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 can you see it? Now with Vim and Tmux, it's fantastic. And now right now my Neo Vim kind of experience, I don't use the old AI as they call it, okay? But I am open to checking out Avante and Super Maven. I just haven't yet. I'm, I'm planning on doing that in July little live on Twitch. <laughs> but deep down, the reason why I don't have AI is, well, you know why. And you know it too. So here's my obvious setup, LSP navigation, okay? If I want to jump to definition, use a little GD for jump to definition. If I want to know what's going on in this function, shift K. If I want to get a quick fix list of all these references, boom, little leader VRR for find references. <laughs> About 80% of all my navigation is with an LSP. And when I'm not doing that, I'm using Harpoon. Look at Harpoon. I can jump to the files that I want to be in as fast as possible. Single key navigation, a lot like my window manager. Oh my goodness. It's almost like my window manager and Harpoon have some things in common. It's almost like Sessionizer, Harpoon, i3, which is now Hyperland, I just forgot for a second, all have a lot of similar navigation. And when I can't figure that out, I just simply use Telescope. Yes, Telescope's awesome, I hear that Falky. Yes, my boy Falky, my boy Falky is writing his own version of Telescope, apparently. I'm just gonna use that when he uses it and it's awesome, probably. It's gonna be it's gonna be the best, because he's just the best. And then lastly, Undo Tree. Look at it, look how great Undo Tree is. People forget that undoing is not linear. It's a tree, there's branching, and guess what? You wanna hear something kind of that's gonna blow your mind? Are you ready for this one? Git is just undo history. Now you'll probably notice that everything I said here that I love about my setup is all about navigation. And the reason is very, very simple. Most of editing is finding where you need to be. And so I've optimized that process. I want to be where I need to be in as few keystrokes as possible. So notice that none of my stuff is like, ooh, I changed git status to GS. I'm a hacker. No, you're not a hacker. You've just saved a couple keystrokes in a meaningless way. Now all you have is a bunch of code you have to maintain to make you have a couple extra shortcuts. Oh man, that's super duper. But to be completely fair, I used to do the exact same thing. I've long since stopped. I just use things the way God intended. Okay, actually, well, in this case, the way that the creator of the tool intended. I stopped trying to make my own shortcuts because when you make your own shortcuts, guess what ends up happening? Something changes and then you're just like stuck in this horrible place of having to update all your scripts or not knowing why they're breaking. Every line of configuration you add is liability. It's almost never a competitive moat. Even Git integration in the editor, like this is super useful. It's super cool that in Vim, I can just select which chunk I want added 
to the git history in which chunk I could remove or I could undo. But at the end of the day, this only saves a small amount of time. I almost never do these operations. It's almost always just simply like git add dot, git commit some dumb message, git push origin master. Like there's nothing to it. And that's 99% of yours as well. I know there's a lot of people that come up with a lot of different reasons why they need to do all this stuff, but really it's all about navigation, okay? You should have your windows set up in such a way that you can go to which program you want. Inside the program, you should be able to go to which sub part of the program you want as fast as possible. Inside your editor, you should be able to go to the file that you want as fast as possible. When you need to delete code, this deletion should be as fast as possible. All of it should take no brain effort. Now, this is the reason why I tell everyone they should learn how to type. It's the same thing. It's not about saving that small amount of milliseconds, okay? It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm getting faster. And then you go to the bathroom and ruin all your savings. No, it's not about that. What it is, it's about saving mental cycles. Because at the end of the day, we can only do so much. When you have to do the same operation and it takes actual focus, to find your program that you need to be in. And you have to do that a thousand times a day. There's like this wearing slow amount of just like anxiousness that will build in you. And by the end of the day, you're like, oh, I don't want to work at all. That's because you keep on doing all these like zone breaking activities. If you don't know how to type and you literally have to look down at your keyboard and hunt for the letters, like that is just valuable brain power you could be using to solve the problem instead of just sitting there painfully thinking through every keystroke like that's crazy thing to do like remove the easy stuff remove the things that make life repetitive so you can actually do the fun parts which is the building part which is creating the super cool software which is spending time mastering your deal pimp configuration so you can have me to make white foods okay and there you go i'm an arch boy now okay i'm an arch boy Sure, maybe I bricked my system once or twice along the process, okay? Maybe I couldn't figure out why certain things didn't work. I tried to get Sway on Ubuntu to work. That didn't work. It doesn't really matter. Arch, Arch install, super easy. It was a lot of fun. I suggest you give it a try. And ultimately, at the end of the day, what I really hope you take away from this isn't that Arch is the pinnacle of development. I hope what you take away is making a good personalized development experience for you and removing the repetitive, annoying parts of development and making those clean and easy is truly the biggest life hack as a developer. The name is The Archigen. You can like and subscribe now, just so you know. You can press those buttons. They're free. They're actually free. You can just press them and like almost nobody will know, so just do it, okay?